Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Jenna Zavino, Bill Heitch, and Jonathan Gabe. The question I want to ask, how do you decide if you've gotten good value when it comes to service? Jonathan, can you kick us off? Sure. Uh, most of my service interactions are things I'll call customer service, where I have a question or a problem that I can articulate with one or two sentences. And value to me is my time. So I'm expecting that the person who responds to me is able to respond quickly and able to answer my question correctly and also quickly. Mm. However, I found that when I think about value, I really can't divorce that in my mind from quality. And when I think of quality of customer service, that's something different. And for me, quality customer service is someone who's treating me as an individual, hearing me first, listening to my needs, and then responding in that way. So mm -hmm. I find that I really can't distinguish service from quality in my mind. I wonder how others think. Okay. I often think of the journey or the experience as a client as one of enticement, the sales process, and then delivery of the product or the experience. But in between those two endpoints, beginning and endpoints, lie lots of gaps. Mm -hmm. And often the gaps reveal where a company or a service provider has really taken the time to consider the quality, like Jonathan has stated, the quality of the experience that the customer or the consumer has had. So whether that is just prompts or notifications to keep you active within let's say I'm in the movement wellness world to keep you active in the behavior change paradigm, uh, whether it's checking in to see how you're doing, showing up a, with something unexpected that's a surprise that enhances everything that you are currently engaged with. All of those elements really lend themselves towards understanding and, and receiving a, a, a promise of mm -hmm. what you were enticed with in the first place. Mm -hmm. you know, when I heard this question, I had a lot of thoughts about it. And uh, to, to some degree, it's the luck of the draw when you get a support mm. engagement. And you can tell almost immediately when you start talking to the person that they, if they know what they're doing or not. And it's, it's very disappointing to me to, to get someone on the phone. And then when I ask a question and I need help, and I really know that they don't know. The answer and I, I i'm not sure what to do about that i'm always polite about it but my expectations are, are reduced and on the other side of the coin the same thing occurs on the positive way we've all had that experience when you call for help and the person knows exactly what you're talking about <laughs> and they help you and you come out of it not just having the problem solved but gaining education about how to solve it yourself later or mm -hmm. a deeper understanding of the technology it just makes me so happy to draw that lucky card of a great, of a great a person. So it sounds like what we're saying is that one is time. Are they efficient? Are they able to get me what I need quickly? Mm -hmm. And then two is quality. Do they give me what I need basically in an effective manner? So mm -hmm. I, if I turn that a little bit, and I am a service provider, the work that I do is considered a service as a high performance psychologist. Mm -hmm. Jenna, you're kind of in the same boat. And part of being able to charge a good fee and make a good living is being able to provide value. What does that mean? What does it mean from my point of view? How do I show I have value? So for me, yes, time, of course, I'm available and quality, I very high quality, but how do you do better than that? What is more? I think there's two things that come immediately into play. One is application, especially when you're working from a human to human perspective. So how does the service, the support, the engagement, the experience, how does that directly apply to their life mm -hmm. so that it has meaning and it exudes value? And the second is synthesis. How does it meld in with things that they are already doing in terms of behavior changing or just in it, like how do they fit it into their current paradigm of the way mm. that they're moving and being in the world because a lot of what the ask is from service providers and from products in general is to ask you to adopt something new into mm -hmm. a paradigm as an adult that's existed for quite some time. So if you can help them understand the exact value that it has to their current experience and then also how to make it work with everything else, I think then that, that ups the level of value automatically. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll put kind of an exclamation point on that to say in the gym 
experience and the health club experience, often there is more revenue made from unused memberships than there is from people actually using the facility. And there's a question mark surrounding that that lies within that gap of where did they miss out on attributing the value of movement and getting them into a routine that works with their current paradigm of their life. And I I do struggle with a business model where if everyone who paid for it showed up, it wouldn't work because it would be too full. That's a challenge for me. (laughs) Agreed. (laughs) I think we see that most Januarys at the gym. I I recognize what you're saying, Jenna, uh, and also that what you said, Dr. Robin, of being able to show the person receiving the service the clear impact and value from the service. Another thing I think of when I think of value that I'm getting from a service provider is I'd like what my experience with that provider to be better than alternatives. Mm. What I mean to say is in this world, there is so much on YouTube. There are so many things I can Google, so many articles I can find. Let's say I've done all that or done some of that. What is the service provider doing for me that I can't do on my own? Uh, It could be helping me sort through all that, by the way. Uh, I find Mm -hmm. that people with the most experience are the people, what does it mean to share experience? To me, people have probably thought of a lot of things, know a lot of alternatives and say, Jonathan, yes, I understand all these things that you've mentioned. But in your case, I think this is the most important thing and this is the way to go. That's a tremendous value for me because what I don't have in that sort of thing is judgment. Hmm. I can see a lot of things. I could understand a lot of things, but I don't know which one is the one I should be paying attention to. So to me, a good value is related to someone having better judgment than me and sharing that judgment with me. Mm -hmm. Better than YouTube. I like that. (laughs) I like that. These are thought provoking questions. What I'm feeling, I guess, more than thinking, what I'm feeling is the word trust comes into play here a lot. Mm. And there's something about working with someone you really trust that provides a wide latitude of forgiveness on one side if they don't maybe meet expectations and almost a camaraderie on the other side where you feel like you really trust them. I don't mean family members, but there's something deeper than just a a vendor-customer relationship. How that trust is established, I don't know. I talked to a school executive yesterday and I started off by saying, I can only imagine what you're going through after the Uvalde situation. And she didn't start crying, but she kind of did. Mm. But the conversation, we developed that trusting bond almost immediately. And when we got to the business conversations, she was very open about Mm -hmm. what they were looking for. And it was just much different than two strangers talking. And and I think if trust is the foundational emotion that you establish, I think it goes a long, long way toward forgiveness of a lot of other little sins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I can piggyback on that point, there feels like, especially in business, there's a fine line between manipulation and authenticity. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I think that when we are able to adequately spend time attempting to understand the condition of somebody's world, and then bridge the gap between how what we've created can actually enhance it, that's where the seeds of trust are planted. Mm -hmm. I always work from a little phrase in my head that says, I see you, I understand what you're going through, and I have something to help. Mm. And we know how quickly that can turn over it to like change your life in 30 days and all of that, like manipulative, you know, maybe, maybe so, maybe not. But when I think when you're, when you're working from a gut perspective, as a service provider, or as somebody who really believes in helping others or making a change in the world, and you stop and consider the end user, the experience, the best possible outcome in consideration of what they're working with, that's where you start to build that trust. That's where magic happens. That's where long, long-term relationships happen, repeat customers. And that's an amazing example of value. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I agree. I've done quick hits about building trust and is it manipulated if you're doing it exclusively for the purpose of business? And I think that the answer to that is yes. If you don't care about someone as a human being first, then it's manipulation. And so what we've come up with is that value consists of time, quality, and trust, which means having the other person's best interest in mind at the end. So I think that's a really good place for us to end a 10 minute conversation about this. Thank you so much for having it with me. I knew it was going to be challenging and you guys stepped up to the plate. I appreciate it. I look forward to talking to each of you again really soon. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.